Welcome back, ninjas, for some more 7 Caillou action. This one's called Rejects Validate Pin Code. ATM machines allow a four or six digit pin code, and pin codes cannot contain anything but exactly four digits or exactly six digits. If the function is passed a valid pin string, return true, otherwise return false. So look at the examples. One, two, three, four is true because it's a four digit and it's all numbers. One, two, three, four, five is false because even though it's all numbers, it's of length five. It has to be either four or six, so it returns false. And in this last example, it's the right size, but it starts with a letter character, so it will return false. I think that's pretty clear. Why don't you go ahead and implement this. In the title, they mention rejects, which is, we've learned, short for regular expressions. So I would recommend solving the problem that way, but you know, you could do it another way without using that class. But either way, give it an honest attempt and come on back. And I'll go ahead and get into this. I'm gonna solve it the way I initially did, and there was a little bug or a little thing I, I wasn't aware of or didn't recall properly that caused me a little bit of confusion and you may have run into that too if you use the same technique that I did. And so I think that'll be instructive to run into the problem and then see why it didn't work. So I'm going to use that, the regular expressions option, but you could have said, hey, um, check the length of the string pin. If it's not of length four or it's not of length six, you can automatically return false, right? And then assuming you get beyond that conditional statement, you could iterate over the string, examine each character, and make sure it's a number. And if at any point you don't encounter a number, you return false. If you pass through, everything's a number, then you know to return true. So that would be another option if you got intimidated out of the regular expression route. And you could have used, you know, like, you could even brought some link in like pin.all. We've seen that all method for innumerable collections. And you could say that they're all um, uh, numeric characters. I'm sorry, is numeric. I think the char class has a method like that that just returns true or false if a character is a number or not. So you could have gone that way. But let's use regular expressions. So we've learned I'm pretty sure I've shown in other videos. Rejects has this handy method called isMatch. So hopefully you'd already gotten to the regular expressions class here in the documentation. And you'll note I'm just under the methods and then isMatch here. And it just indicates whether the regular expression finds a match in an input string. And of course you have these various overloads I'm not going to worry about time span. It's nice that you have those things. We'll keep it simple here or rejects options. I'm going to use this one where it compares the regular expression against an input string. You can imagine one of those is the regular expression, one's the input string. So I'll click on that overload. It'll drop us right to that point in the document page and you can scroll down and find an example of that. And hopefully this isn't new, but here's an example, right? So you can see their input um, comes first and then your pattern comes second. We're gonna make one of these regular expression patterns, right? That's gonna work for us. So we'll use this technique. So we've got rejects is match. The other thing that might've tripped you up is that it seems like there's two patterns here, right? There's a size four or a size six. So you may have done, you know, one of these and then or basically duplicate the thing where your second pattern is for size six. You know, maybe your your pattern in um, your pattern in the first one checked for four digit all numbers, and your regular expression in the second one checked for all numbers size six. Right? You don't have to do that though. Um, you can, but we'll combine them and we'll learn how to do that. So. If you come to this page I have pulled up called alternation constructs in regular expressions and you'll note that it modifies the rejects to enable 
either or or conditional matching. And so we're going to use this one with the vertical bar pattern matching. It's pretty handy. You can use the vertical bar to match any one of a series of patterns. So we could even have had more than two, right? And if you want to read about the others, go ahead. You know I encourage that. Let me get down to an example with our pipe. So you could see how they used it in here, right? You can enclose your expression in parentheses and then use that vertical bar. So they're saying it could match either the letter A or the letter E. And so you can imagine we can do something like that to say either size four or either size six. So let's try that. Let's see where that gets us. So um, the first one was our input, right? So I can just pass pin right along. And then we need to form a pattern. If it's more comfortable for you to make a separate variable for the pattern, you can do that. Otherwise, you could just, um, I would probably just list the pattern here if it were reasonable, which it will be. So do you remember, we've, we've used these recently. Um, remember to check for digits. We did this. You have that backslash D and then you put the number of digits you're looking for in the curly braces. So this almost exactly does what we want. We just need it to have a different number than three, right? So let's steal that as a starter, right? So we've got backslash D. This will uh, match with four digits. But remember, um, we've used the anchor constructs in the past. If we just leave it like this, that's saying the digits can occur anywhere in the input string. So you could have a bunch of letters, then four numbers, then a bunch more letters, and that would be a match. So we learned about those anchors to sort of say, look, the whole input has to be digits, you know, and we did, um, I'm sorry, dollar sign is at the end. We did the caret at the beginning, a dollar sign at the end, right? And in our cases, our case, I'm sorry, we're going to want two of these. So I'm already enclosing them in a parentheses. And we're going to repeat that. We're going to say all digits um, six, right? It could be either four or six. Now, this is how I did it. We're going to run into an error. It's going to be mostly right, but we're going to run into an error and it'll be um, a good learning moment. So then you can just put pattern in here. But remember, if you're comfortable, you could just paste this right in where pattern is. So um, I'll go ahead and run a test. What do, what do we need here? They brought in regular expressions. That's good. So we're looking good, okay. And we hit the bigger suite. And then watch this, maybe you ran into this. We got some green, right? But we hit this one where it's wrong output for one, two, three, four. And then for some reason they put the closing double quote on a new line. Hmm, what does that mean? So if you're confused, you can go console right line. Remember, add these debug statements input we'll call it pin and we'll say input length pin dot length that's how you get how long a string is right so let's see if we can help ourselves out a little bit here get a little more information okay we get down to our failure and we'll notice that the input was one two three four yeah we kind of knew that but notice the input length is five and because this double quote appears on the new line, I mean, it's pretty clear that the fifth character was a new line character. Um, that would be like a backslash N if you wanted to create that. So our pattern, we're saying, hey, look, it's gotta be, we put from the front to the end and it's gotta be only digits. How is only digits matching with a new line character at the end. Clearly new line character at the end is not a digit. Um, you lied to me C sharp. I'm not your friend anymore, right? So what you got to do is go back to the anchors, you know, and you got to see it. 
you know, you got to do that sanity check and see if they really mean what you think they mean. And notice, for the dollar sign in particular, by default, the match must occur at the end of the string or, oh, look at that. You didn't read the fine print. I didn't read the fine print. Before slash n at the end of the string. And that's what we're dealing with here, right? And so it's saying or before. And if you look at what that input was, that is a match then. If you look at just the characters before the new line, it was one, two, three, four, and that would match our regular expression. So it's like, okay, great. Now what? Well, what else did they give us in the anchors? If you come down, uh, these A to Z's kind of hint that from the beginning and the end. So if you find backslash Z, the match must occur at the end of the string or before the new line character at the end of the string. Okay, thanks or nothing. But look at lowercase z. The match must occur at the end of the string only. None of this special new line character guy gets free lunch. He's along for the ride, right? Nobody. End of the string only. So, what could that do for us? Bye bye dollar sign. Normally I don't like that, but in this case, it might be good. So we'll hit the attempt. And there, that terrible problem went away. And if you wanted, you could match them, you know, and use the slash A if you just like the A to Z kind of look. That should be fine too. But it worked out without the backslash A. And I'm also wondering if I could have done, let's see, maybe this is better. We got the backslash D with either four or six. I'm, I'm curious if this will work too. Oh no. Yes, that might not do what I was hoping it would do. Let's just put it back. And D four or six digits, right? Four digits or six digits, all enclosed in our parentheses and sandwiched between the beginning anchor and the end anchor with no new line funny business. So I put that back. I'm going to delete the print line. That was just to help. It was supposed to be a reminder that if you're stuck, start printing out data and figure out what's going wrong. And you know, maybe you did, if you didn't catch on that new line character at the end, maybe you, you, you're you going crazy. So you go, you step through each character in the pin input string and you say, print that individual character. And hopefully that would have um, tipped you off that it was a new line character. I could kind of tell by where they put the, the, um, the ending double parenthesis. So, um, and then I'm just gonna consolidate this don't need to make an extra string pattern variable. Just trying to make that comfortable. Now we get into one line Wally world here and make sure I didn't do anything. And so, yeah, I'll probably submit mine like this. So maybe you didn't know about this or that's pretty handy, right? You can combine all sorts of different patterns. Um, this one got me, I, I thought the dollar sign, I didn't realize it had that extra provision for the, for new lines. So, um, that's about it. Um, let me know how it went for you, what you came up with as a solution. We'll submit it, get the points and check out what other people did. So see if there's anything else you can add to your arsenal. Go through char. So yeah, use some link, right? We kind of talked about that all and checking that they're all is digit. I may have said is numeric, but it looks like it's is digit. So yeah, cool. Checks match, that's pretty much, we might've fallen into that group there, yeah. So yeah. Those work. Not everyone used the regular expressions. They're good to learn though. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful. 
Hit me up with comments, questions, feedback if you have it. Otherwise, we'll keep rolling. Thanks for watching.